Hey guys, it's Fonzie with Dip Your Car and I could not be more excited about today's video. Now really for the past nine years, the entire dipping industry has relied on almost one sprayer system to get the job done. The original DYC dip sprayer was fantastic for what it was and it's been around a long time. However, today we are launching a brand new, massively improved sprayer system with the new Dip Your Car G4 sprayer. Today I'm gonna break down for you exactly what the sprayer system is, what you get in the kit Itself. And then, of course, we're going to cover how to set up the gun to spray, some tips and tricks, some troubleshooting, how to clean and maintain the gun as well. We have a lot to cover. Enjoy the video. So first, I'm going to break down for you exactly what the new G4 sprayer system is and what you get when you purchase the system. Now, what we did here is we started with our partners over at Wagner, and for the last two years, we've been developing this new system. And what we started with was an existing shell and form factor, basically gutted all the components and re-engineered all of those components specifically for our use and need at Dip Your Car. So everything you see here from the turbine itself, the spray gun, the air cap, the dip tip needle, the quick connect hose, everything here is exclusive to the Dip Your Car G4 sprayer system. Now, what I'm gonna cover is the gun, the turbine, and the hose, tell you why they're a little bit different than the previous models, and then we'll start getting into how to set it up and do a spraying demo as well. Now let's talk about the G-Force turbine. This is the workhorse of the system. This is what generates our power and airflow. Now there's really two things that make this turbine unique. The first is this is our first dip your car turbine with variable speeds. It has a low and a high speed setting. And you may think, well, why would I wanna use a low setting? I'd probably want maximum pressure all the time. And over the past couple years of development, we learned that when working with a spray gun system on smaller surfaces, which a lot of people like to do, like wheels, trim, or speed shapes, using the lower power system or the lower power setting actually works better than full power. So that really does come in handy. Now, we wanted this system to be as powerful as possible while still being in the DIY price point. So what we learned is we can make a more powerful turbine and a better engineered gun to increase and maximize the pressure at the gun tip. So this turbine is actually going to be providing 50% more power and pressure at the gun tip than our previous standard DIY model. You are absolutely gonna feel that when you're spraying the car. Better atomization, more power, smoother finish. Now we're gonna talk about the G4 spray gun itself because this is where the majority of our research and development went into over the past two years. We didn't wanna only create a better performing or higher quality spray gun. We took a very close look at what challenges our users were experiencing with our previous model to make sure we address those challenges in the new system so we can leave them in the past. One of the most important things to me when developing the spray gun was predictability. With the old unit, Every time you fill it up, every time you pick it up to spray, the spray pattern might be a little bit different, a little bit off, and we spent a lot of time fidgeting with the internals of that gun to get it to spray straight and spray correctly. With this gun, we made a ton of changes with the internals, with the air cap, and with the needle itself to make sure that when you pick this gun up, it is much more predictable, much less variability. We want you to be able to fill this gun up, point, shoot, and repeat you're absolutely going to get better results with less effort every time you use the G-Force gun. Now let's talk about the general setup of the G-Force spray gun when you're getting ready to spray for the first time. So your gun's not gonna come fully assembled, it's gonna look more like this. Now setup is very simple, you're gonna take the front of the spray gun and you're gonna plug in your paint straw to the bottom and then you're gonna press in that foam gasket all the way up. That's gonna screw directly into the paint cup, but before that, you've got the back handle. So you're actually gonna insert this at a 90 degree angle and just rotate it until it clicks. Your gun is now fully assembled. Of course, you wanna make sure your paint straw is straight and aiming down forward. And then you're going to load up your paint cup with dip and you're gonna screw it on nice and secure. Now the front end of the gun has several components. Let me make sure that you are familiar with those components and that they're in the right order. So you're going to have the outer ring, you're gonna have the air cap, then you've got this black nozzle here, and on the back of the nozzle, you're actually gonna have an O-ring. You wanna make sure that that black O-ring is sitting flush up against the edge of the nozzle there, and then you're gonna press that all the way into the front of the gun until that's flush as well. Then of course goes the air cap and the outer ring. Now, when you're putting on the outer ring, you don't wanna over tighten it. 
just tighten it till it's nice and snug, and then make sure that your air cap is perfectly horizontal. That's gonna give you that nice straight vertical spray pattern. Once that's ready to go, load it up and shoot. So now we know how to set up the G-Force spray gun. So when you're ready to spray, you've got your DYC G-Force turbine. You've got your hose. Of course, this portion of the hose, the smooth portion, is gonna push right into the front of the turbine. You wanna make sure it's nice and snug in there. You've got the quick connect at the end of the hose. You wanna make sure that that's nice and tight on there. And then you're just gonna snap it right into the back. And then as soon as you turn your turbine on, you wanna push it all the way forward for the high setting when you're spraying a full car, one click forward when you want the low setting. And then you've got your product dial down here. The more that you screw it out and away from the trigger, the smaller your spray fan and your flow is gonna be. And the closer to the trigger, the more open and larger your spray fan is gonna be. This is gonna be personal preference. I like to just put it a couple turns away from there just so we can get about a six to seven inch spray fan. We'll cover that a little bit more during the spray demo and you're good to go. Now, one thing to note, the DYC G4 spray gun is compatible with previous dip sprayer turbine systems. So if you have the advanced turbine system and hose, this will click right onto that. This is a perfect upgrade for the advanced system. And if you have the previous standard dip sprayer system, this spray gun is also compatible with that one as well. Keep in mind that this G-Force turbine is considerably better than the original dip sprayer turbine, so the entire system as a whole is a more appropriate upgrade, but if it only fits your budget to upgrade to the gun, you can do that as well. So now that we've got the gun set up, before we spray any surfaces or any cars, even between coats, I always like to make sure I check the spray pattern just to see if there's any adjustments that need to be made. So in a second here, Gabe's gonna turn on the turbine, and I'm gonna just fire off a couple quick shots, and we wanna check the shape and size of the spray pattern. So what we're looking for is making sure that we're nice and vertical, nice and tight. We don't have anything going haywire anywhere and these look pretty darn good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start spraying a couple coats down here on the hood just to show you exactly how I'm moving my speed and my distance. Now we've let this fully dry up. We've got a great smooth and even finish. The technique is very similar to the other spray systems. You just gotta pay attention to your distance and your speed. You wanna make sure that the first coat of PDS goes on about 50% and everything else is nice and wet with overlapping passes. No real changes there. Now what I'm gonna show you is how to clean the gun and maintain it in between coats. And then of course, what to do with the gun after the project is complete. So in between coats, there's not that much to do, but I wanna walk you through the process a little bit. Now, let me give you a very fair warning because I have made this mistake many times over the past couple years while we were developing this gun. This gun is going to pressurize the paint cup in a way that the old guns did not. Meaning if between coats, for whatever reason, you wanna take off this locking ring, take off the air cap or nozzle, you have to, I don't know if you heard that hiss, you have to unthread the paint cup before you take the nozzle off. Because if you don't depressurize the paint cup and take off the nozzle, it will just start shooting dip pretty much all over the place and there's not a lot of ways to stop it until the pressure is released. Gabe has cleaned up many messes for me making this mistake, so I'm hoping you guys can avoid it. So in between coats, you really don't have to disassemble the front unless you have some kind of problem going on, but very rare. You're going to unthread the paint cup you're gonna pull the trigger to make sure any dip that is in there is released back into the paint cup. You're gonna set your cup aside. Best thing to have is a microfiber. What I like to do is just wipe off the paint straw, pull the straw and the gasket out of the gun. Most of the time, there shouldn't be any dip underneath the inside of the gun, but if there is, you're just gonna wipe that clean. I like to wipe the gasket, and I know Gabe likes to wipe the gasket between coats just so there's not too much buildup, just so the gasket doesn't warp too much, especially if you're using top coat. 
Let that air out a little bit in between coats while your dip is drying. Fill up your paint cup. When the dip is dry and it's ready to go again, reinsert the straw, pop the gasket back in place. Make sure it's past all the threading. You're going to screw it back down on, make sure it's snug, plug it into your turbine, check the pattern again just for good measure, and you're ready for the next coat. Now I'm gonna show you how to clean, disassemble, and maintain your G4 spray gun when you're all done spraying for the day. So the first thing I have is we've got some gloves on, we've got a microfiber towel, we've got a couple cleaning brushes that you can find in the spray gun cleaning kit available at dipyourcar.com, and we've got some naphtha thinner. If you can't find naphtha locally, we do sell it on Dip Your Car, but most of the time you can source it locally at your hardware store. So first thing we're gonna do is just take the top half of the spray gun off the paint cup, Pull the trigger to make sure there's no dip left inside there. And we're gonna pour out any leftover dip that we had in the paint cup, save it for another project. And then we're gonna take about half a quart of naphtha and pour it right into our paint cup. Then we're gonna put the top half of the gun right back on. And this is really gonna do quite a bit of the work for us here and we're gonna shake that up really well. You wanna let the naphtha get in all the nooks and crannies, coat the inside of the spray, uh, the paint cup here. And then what you're gonna do in a well-ventilated area is you're going to spray that half a quart of naphtha through the gun. That naphtha going up and through the chamber is gonna really help clean out a lot of that spray gun. Try to spray all the way through it. Then you're gonna take back off the paint cup. You can hear it depressurize there. Pull the trigger and get any extra naphtha out. You can already see the gun's much cleaner than it was. You're gonna pour that naphtha out. And then you're gonna put the microfiber towel to work. I like to wipe off the threads on the paint cup and then get that microfiber in there wipe out the inside of the paint cup. Any leftover dip is gonna get picked up and we're gonna let that air dry. Then we're going to take out the pickup tube. We're gonna wipe that down with the microfiber and we're gonna wipe both sides of that white foam gasket. Try to get any excess dip and naphtha off that. We're gonna let that sit aside and air dry as well. Now we're gonna take off the locking ring. We're gonna take off the air cap as well. These two pieces traditionally won't get dip on them, so they don't need a lot of care and maintenance. We're gonna set those aside. We're gonna take off the front nozzle. Now, sometimes you're gonna have some leftover dip inside that front nozzle, so I like to start with the microfiber and just wipe out any liquid dip that's in there and then take one of our brushes, dip it in that naphtha, and give it a nice little scrub, and dry it out. We're gonna take the smaller brush, dip it in some naphtha, clean inside around the needle. You have to be gentle with this, you don't wanna scratch up your needle assembly, but you wanna get it in there. And then the cone brush again, clean this whole chamber inside here. And then we're gonna grab that small brush one more time and we're gonna clean out that breather hole. Make sure that breather hole right here on the side of the pickup tube is nice and clear. You can take the top brush part and you can clean that there. And then what I like to do is remove this gasket from the pickup tube so that they can air dry individually nice and clean. So I'm gonna give this about an hour or so to air dry, let all the solvents evaporate, then I'm gonna reassemble it, put it aside, and then it's ready for my next dip job. Now I'm gonna walk you through some of the troubleshooting tips that you have to keep in mind when you're using this spray gun over time, because this is a very reliable unit, but of course there can be challenges that arise as you go. The first we're gonna cover is this white foam gasket here. Let's just say that you're spraying glossy top coat and you leave the foam gasket saturated in the glossy top coat for too long and it swells too big and won't fit back in the underside of the gun properly. All you have to do is pop the white gasket 
down off of this little ridge here and off the pickup tube. Each one of the spray guns comes with a spare white gasket. You're gonna slip it right up the pickup tube and you're gonna snap it right back in place on that groove, pop it right back in the gun and you can continue spraying. And like I said, when the solvents evaporate on this one, it'll shrink right back down to size. The other thing that you wanna keep in mind is also on the pickup tube and that's the breather hole. There's a very small breather hole here that needs to remain clear in order for you to get the proper uh, flow through the gun. So if you find yourself spraying with the gun and you see a restricted pattern size, it's shrinking down, or maybe you're getting some dry spray or, or you're not flowing and wetting out, check the pickup tube. All you need to do is take the small cleaning brush and you're gonna poke it through the breather hole. And you're gonna be able to see it come through on the other side. And then you're also gonna make sure that this little well here on the other side of the breather hole is clear from any dip as well. So you can wipe that out. You can poke it through the other side again, make sure it's nice and clear. And then that will solve any of the flow problems that you're having while you're spraying. One other issue that could potentially come up is let's just say you're testing your spray pattern before you uh, spray the car. You notice that the test uh, the spray pattern is a little off. It's very rare, but this front air cap could get a little bit off center. There's not a lot of room here for it to move. But if you notice that your spray pattern's a, a little bit off and you are properly level, because that's 99% of the time gonna be the problem, you're not properly level. If you're properly level and you're still a little bit off, make sure that the outer edge of this air cap is nice and even around the locking ring. If it's a little bit pushed to the left or right, you can just recenter it with your thumb and you should be good to go. The final piece of troubleshooting here is a longer term piece where if over time you notice some bubbling or some gurgling or sputtering within the gun, there is a red seal here. Sometimes you'll find it inside the nozzle, but most of the time you'll find it seated right here on the inside of the gun. This red seal will need to be replaced over time, just like any spray gun, your gaskets and seals will be replaced. So this pops right off, and there is also an extra red needle seal or seal here in your spray guns as well. So it's gonna be a while till you need to replace that, but over time you will replace it and it'll pop right off. Other than that, it's gonna be very straightforward, very predictable. So that's everything you need to know about the brand new Dip Your Car G4 sprayer unit. Again, you can buy the gun on its own if you already have an existing Dip Your Car sprayer unit and you wanna upgrade just the gun. You can get the gun and the turbine together with the hose or for an advanced user looking for the most performance, you can get the brand new gun with the advanced stage three turbine as well. They're all available on dipyourcar.com. If you have any questions, the customer service team is always there, ready to help. I'm so excited about this unit. Thank you so much for being patient. I know it took a lot of time to get here, but the wait was surely worth it. It's Fonzie. I'll see you guys on the next video.